Oh hi everyone! So I thought I would just look at the NHS today and I've got a few ideas about how we could probably make it a lot better and probably more efficient. Boots the Chemist is charging the National Health Service obscene amounts of money for products that sell for a fraction of the price in store. The Times investigation has revealed that the high street chain has charged the NHS as much as 1500 for a single pots of moisturiser that others have sold for less than £2. And this is from me February the 2nd, 2018. Apparently what the um, NHS does is it orders in specials, which are items which are specially prepared in some way. I partly recognise that part of the problem here is it's probably quite expensive for a company like Boots to produce one item. Um, you don't have the economies of scale, but nevertheless, it seems like there's an awful lot of money going into this, which could probably be better allocated. I'm kind of reminded of the model they have in Spain. It seems like it's it works unbelievably well. In Spain, the local council will basically look at all the drugs that they need for their area, and then they will go to the drug companies. They'll negotiate with the drug companies in order to get a good price on a lot of different products. As a result, I know people in Spain who have had a month's worth of medication and they've had to pay uh, say 12 pence in English money so that's virtually nothing for a month's medication. A system like that would be you know really good if certain areas of the UK could negotiate with drug companies for you know the products that they actually need. You could argue that a lot of money going to the drug companies kind of gets reinvested. Oh, well the Americans have pretty good healthcare generally and they have huge amounts of money goes into drugs but does help to develop new drugs but nevertheless we're talking about people's lives here and affordability so £1,323 for 40 milliliter of ointment for severe skin problems which usually goes for about £1.19 £860 for a mixture of hydrocortisone cream £2,200 for chewable vitamin supplements that can cost a 46 of that. Private companies are making a lot of money off the NHS. You see, personally, what I think has happened, or what I get the sense of, is because a lot of NHS trusts have had to make cuts, one of the areas that they've cut is their pharmacy department. Because, you know, most hospitals have a pharmacy department. Um, my local hospital has a very small pharmacy department that was shut when I went there. But, um, Nevertheless, if they can actually source more of their drugs from in-house, if they actually have the staff, the pharmacy staff who can actually mix the drugs and, you know, produce them in-house, it might work out an awful lot cheaper. I mean, it might not, but I'm kind of guessing that it's probably cheaper than getting boots to do it at, with a cost of over a thousand pounds. Obviously, these are special drugs. I do kind of understand why they might cost more. NHS suffers worst ever staff and cash crisis figures show number of vacancies at record high in England as underlying deficit of 4.3 billion revealed. This might just be down to not getting enough funding. For example, one of the things I believe is the people who use the NHS should get more choice about what kind of treatments they get and what kind of information they get. Some people in the NHS, for it, well some patients in the NHS want to know a lot about what's happening to them, others might not want to know so much. So I think patient accountability should be a much higher priority than it currently is. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is I think nurses, especially at the lower end of the spectrum, are underpaid in the UK. So here from nursing notes here, um, NHS nurses in the United Kingdom are subject to the agenda um, for change pay structure which gives nurses an annual average salary of 25,653. Now in Australia, nurses have an average annual salary of 39,000. So it's obviously much higher in Australia. Well, some nurses, for example, that qualify in the UK go over to Australia because the pay is better and the conditions are better and quite frankly, the lifestyle is probably better. Now, to be fair, I've heard it is more expensive to actually live in Australia. Nurse shortages cost the NHS up to 2.4 billion last year. So what seems to happen is because the hospital doesn't actually have enough staff, because it probably doesn't 
Well, it's quite hard to recruit staff, I'm kind of getting the feeling, because maybe they're not paid enough. Um, there are shortages, so they have to hire in agency nurses, which actually costs a lot more than full-time regular nurses at the hospital. And one of the things I would quite like to see, and this is kind of copied from the Germans, is important people for the country, for example, engineers in the case of Germany, and nurses and doctors and other professionals who are trained at university, um, they should get free or discounted university training costs if they agree to work within the NHS, for example, or work within the UK for, say, 10 years, right? And Or maybe five years. Something like that would mean that if you actually trained a nurse in the UK, then they would work here for, say, five or 10 years, and then they could actually pay nothing for their um, training. And this would encourage more people to actually get an education in nursing, and it would be um, a much smaller risk. One of the things we hear, and I don't know if this is necessarily true or not, working class people tend to be more risk averse when it comes to money. If you actually had a system like this, where you could actually train up people to work as nurses and doctors in the UK, then more people are going to do it because they're going to think, well, I don't mind working for 10 years if my education is free, you know. I don't think they should have to pay out and then get the money back, but perhaps if, um, you know, there's some kind of contract for them to do that kind of work. And I mean, there should be like opt-outs, then the money would just go to student loan or something. You know, it's fairly sensible in the UK because if you don't have an income, for example, if you're unemployed, then you don't have to pay necessarily until you get another job. I did notice that the, um, the Guardian article and the Telegraph article both use the same photo, which you know, is obviously a stock photo from Getty Images. They all seem to use Getty Images, but obviously on here it's fair use because of um, the fact I'm sort of reporting on the news. But certainly I do think that we should probably pay nurses and probably junior doctors a lot more than we do. And I think that would actually sort out a lot of the problems that we're having in the UK right now with staffing levels. Okay, thank you very much for listening.